Do you know that one guy from Liberia we study for North? Hmm, he don't find any broke the table where we try to manage you. Hmm. He said that uh, if when uh, if uh, the Northerners not achieve the Islamic movement, that there will be no peace in Nigeria. As he stands, he said, unless Nigeria is Islamized. Only then there will be peace now. For those of you where they hope say things will go better today, tomorrow, when I don't hear them, come watch this video. Don't forget say you're still there for news info. Watch and share and subscribe to the channel. Just watch this video. Um, what I want to speak here tonight, Mayogun, the so, issue of Nigeria. The Nigeria, I'm from Liberia, by the way. The name of my country is Liberia. And if you know Liberia, Nigeria helped us in the 90s when we had civil war in our country. Liberia was falling apart. We fought civil war, you know, from 1999 down to 2003, and Nigerian forces helped quench the civil war in Liberia. So Nigeria was the hope of the continent, the giant of Africa, a country we all look up to and say, one day in the future, this is going to be our China. This is going to be our United States. If Nigeria succeeds, Africa succeeds. Every African, especially if you live in West Africa, and I'm not talking about regular people or people who really analyze issue you will know that nigeria was the hope of the continent but unfortunately in the last te uh, 10 years we've seen nigeria going down the drain we've seen nigeria um promising future now becoming dashed and we've seen that it's like, it seems that there's no hope so when people are making a lot of analysis i come in and tell them that this is my own understanding the problem in nigeria it's a summary of what is happening in all of African countries, which is number one, the way we got independence, the institutions that we inherited, we are not decolonized. It's like the colonial masters made a deal with people we call freedom fighters, and they replaced them. They just replaced the white Oibo with our black brother who continued the colonial legacy. And I will give you an example. Your police... It's a typical colonial police. During the colonial era, the police was meant to protect the colonial elite. The police was there to beat up the people, subdue them, and terrorize them to protect the colonial masters. That's what the African police do now. That's what the Nigerian police does. The elite of the colonial era, they were bourgeoisie who lived in Africa, but then their real home is London. Their hospital is Paris. When the colonial masters get sick, they take them to Lisbon, they take them to Paris, they take them abroad to go to get treated in the what they call the metropole. Mm. And the, the Africa was the farm, was the place they work, was where it's, it's where you extract the natural resources. The London is where you go to enjoy it. Our elites are following the same pattern. The educational institution were designed to make the colonial masters to look like saviors and look tell the people who have been exploited to be to, to appear as if they are being indebted they have to be grateful to the colonial masters for giving them education why that education was actually a miseducation if you watch our education today it followed the same pattern the religion was created to pacify the public in order for them not to stage a revolution the colonialists were in bed with the religious masters. They tell the people to come down. In fact, our, our traditional rulers, some of them were compromised. Those of them who refused to compromise were removed from their throne. If you compromise with the colonial system, then you remain on your throne. Today is the same thing. Our mm -hmm. traditional leaders have to compromise with, with, the, with the men in Abuja. Mm -hmm. The unknown forces in Abuja, in the capital, they have to connive with them to, to destroy your destiny. Now, all I'm saying here is that the colonial system continues, but it has just changed face. It just have a black face on it. Hmm. So I say this to tell you, when people say, let's divide Nigeria, let's break up the country, let's have a Yoruba nation, let's have a, 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 a Igbo nation. As a Pan-Africanist, I'm sad because our philosophy was to create a black United States of Africa. So when we see now that a country like Nigeria cannot survive, that means that our theory has been debunked. But here is what we tell people. It doesn't matter if, if you divide Nigeria today into seven countries. The same elite who are in bed with London, 
who are in bed with these forces in Europe, they will be the same elite who will take over this country. Example, South Sudan and Sudan. Did South Sudan become better after they broke out from Sudan? I don't think so. Many countries are broken up in Africa after independence. But it was the same elite who were transported to those new, uh, to those new country. The main people who wanted actual freedom were killed, were removed. Those who wanted real transformation were replaced with the bourgeoisie. Then the second thing I want to say, the forces, the internal forces that are working in African countries are against the people. If you look at Nigeria very well today, you can determine the future of Nigeria by looking at the forces that are controlling Nigeria. What are these internal forces? One, the religious group. I grew up in northern Nigeria. I went to school there. I was born a Muslim. I studied the Quran. I went to, if you have been to Niger State Mina, if you know the institution called RET, Islamic Education Trust in Mina, controlled by Sheikh Ahmed Lemu. Those are the people that brought me up. They gave me scholarship. I went to that school in New Horizons College. I'm a Quran. I graduated there. I learned the Quran. I was a Muslim until I started traveling and I decided to put religion aside. What I saw in northern Nigeria is that these people were colonized twice. They were mm. first colonized by the, by the Sokoto Caliphate through the Islamic Revolution. They were still under that colonialism when the British colonialism came. So they are not in alignment with you in the South. You don't understand. They are operating under two influences of colonial culture that they have inherited. One, they inherited an extreme version of Islam called Wahhabism, mm -hmm. which even Saudi Arabia is trying to ab ab abolish and, or, and embrace mod modernism, modernity. This northern Nigeria inherited an archaic, outdated Islamic view in kid that came from Baghdad and Saudi Arabia those days, they inherited it. And it is very much entrenched in their culture. They do not believe in, in, in Nigeria as long as they, do, they are not on top. As long as Islam, do, for them, the, prop, the, 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 the vision for Nigeria is for Islam to triumph. Mm. That's the understanding for them. The destiny of Nigeria must lean toward Islamic revolution. That is the, the elite, the agenda. I'm not talking about the ordinary people on the street. They don't know what's going on. Mm. But the elite, that was the thinking of Usman Danfodio. That was the thinking of Sir Amadou Bello. That was the thinking of all these elite that came up. The design, when they took over the army, you don't understand why they influenced the army in Nigeria. Their vision is to lead to Islamic revolution. Now, for you guys in the South, you had only one colonialism, which is the European. That's why there are people, Chris, John, Johnson, when you when you are tired of European colonialism, you fall back to your culture. They don't have no culture to fall back to. Hmm. They only have Islamic extremism to fall back to when they are angry. That's why every riot in the north take an Islamic tomb. Any fight, any any fighting has to take an Islamic tomb. They do not have any ideology or philosophy to fight with other than Islam. And this makes you guys to live in two different planets but yet you are trying to build a country. For me, even as a Pan-Africanist who want Africa to be together, I can tell you that Northern Southern Nigeria cannot survive. I'm sorry to tell everyone, it will not survive.